morning, everybody. I don't know if the mic is caught up in my hair. Can you hear me? Great. Um, <clears throat> I was telling some of my colleagues earlier that I feel a little bit of an imposter because I'm new to Richmond. Um, I've only been here for two years, but I've lived in a lot of other cities, and I'm seeing some things here that I've seen all over the United States. For more than 25 years now, I've been thinking about how to create um, vibrant cities and how to connect people to work. Through a lot of experiences, two things have stuck with me. One, work is very important to transformation of cities. And two, um, <clears throat> that work is very important and that people need to sit, feel a sense of ownership in order for transformation to be authentic. I'm from, I grew up in Pittsburgh, the south side of Pittsburgh. <laughs> I went away to college and I came back to do graduate work at Carnegie Mellon University in the policy school. And when I got there, people were all abuzz about Pittsburgh. Um, Pittsburgh's economy had transformed from being driven by steel to being driven by medicine, technology, and education. And um, it was being heralded as this case study of best practice and how to transform a city. And uh, <clears throat> that was great, but I was scratching my head because I could do all the by this time, I could do all the industry analysis and socioeconomic, all the numbers had gone up, it was looking better. Um, but when I talked to my friends and relatives that lived in Pittsburgh and had been there all my life, they were either doing the same or worse off. And so um, it struck me that uh, the economy had left them behind. And um, so that was, that was a critical, um, transformation and my interest in how economic transformation um, hits the ground in various places. And uh, a couple of years, so a couple of years went by and I would call back every once in a while excited about the economic development that was going on in Pittsburgh. And I'd call a friend or a relative and say, hey, did you hear about this or did you hear about that? And one person said to me, I don't know what those people downtown are doing with their city. And it, that really stuck with me, because what it meant is that the transformation that had taken place um, had dis effectively disconnected a lot of the natives from the city itself, Connect, disconnected them from the economy. They did not feel uh, effective in it. They did not feel obligated to it. They did not feel responsible for it. So um, a key lesson about transformation of cities, fast forward many years, 10, 20, don't want to give my age away here, but some years <laughs> to this recession. And uh, the recession that we've just gone through left many cities just reeling. They were already struggling to survive. And now they were dealing with the recession as well. And many of them were trying to rebuild them, are still trying to rebuild themselves and rethink how we come at this. In the backdrop of that, the macro economy had done some things that we were still trying to get used to. Technological advances, corporations spread across the world, um, employers no longer loyal to us and now hiring out the jobs that we used to have. So cities and individuals had to find a way to deal with this. They chose to deal with it by turning to, oh, I'm forgetting to, <laughs> completely forgot about my slides, by turning to entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship became a huge, um, gained a, a huge boost, and entrepreneurship has always been a part of city building and a, as of economic development, but I think some of the transformations in the economy um, really increase the importance and the potential of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is a great thing. Here in Richmond, one of the things that I've been most struck by is all of the energy around entrepreneurship. Really? Okay. So, um, <clears throat> entrepreneurship does a lot of great things. Increases the tax base, uh, jobs are increased, sometimes it revitalizes communities. When we try to do entrepreneurship, some of the things that we focus on are targeting industries and 
and honing in on the latest technology. One of the problems is that that approach leaves out a great deal of the people in the communities. It doesn't really reach them. Um, <clears throat> it leaves out the 55-year-old that was laid off in the last recession and will never get another corporate job because they can ha hire somebody half his age at one-third of his salary. It leaves out um, the other, the web, uh, the artists who could not for afford a studio before but now could have a thriving business on the internet if he just knew how. It leaves out Miss Anna who bakes the most authentic rum cake um, possible but she doesn't know how to do accounting and that sort of thing. It leaves out Mr. Roberts who fixes cars in his driveway based on skills he gained in the military but um, also doesn't know how to create a website and that sort of thing. We need to reconceptualize what we think of as entrepreneurship and who we think of as um, relevant. And we need to reconnect all of the community to entrepreneurship, not just entrepreneurship, but ownership in our economic transformation. Um, <clears throat> doing so leads to higher income, inclusiveness, and sustainability, which ultimately leads to a higher quality of life. Going back to my Pittsburgh example, all of that means that um, the land becomes not his land or her land or their land, but our land. The community becomes not their community, but our community. The economy becomes not his economy, their economy, her economy, but my economy and our economy. And when people are invested in it and feel a sense of ownership, um, I think the transformation is more authentic, more thorough, and um, ultimately more effective. Thank you.